Ah, uh, okay. Um uh, continuation po sa ating tang diagnosis may BC, yung tang coating. Okay, sa tang coating uh, is a natural consequence of transformation of the ingested food and liquid in the stomach. It is some of the dirty residue rising upward along with the pure chi that has been separated from the impure dross. So if we have a healthy stomach uh, or healthy chi stomach, uh, yun po yung lumalabas or magmamanifest ng uh, normal tongue coating. The tongue coating should be thin enough to enable the tongue itself to be seen through the coating. So yung nor normal tongue coating, uh, thin po siya and visible po na makikita natin yung tongue body. The tongue should look like a wheat field in the spring when the wheat has sprouted and it's just beginning to push its way up through the soil. So inihalin tulad po siya sa wheat field na umuusbong pa lang po patubo and nakikita natin sa tang uh, paunti-unti po siyang uh, nakikita and deep on the deeper part or yung sa ilalim niya yun yung tang body. The soil can still be clearly seen but the field has a green hue and when you look closer, you can distinguish the individual wheat sprout. So, habang inoobserbahan po natin yung tang, uh, dapat po nakikita natin yung uh, tang coating, yung parang yung wheat sprouts individually. So, sabi dito, similarly, you should be able to see the body of the tang through the coating and the coating should look like a small individual dots on the tongue. So, sa normal tongue coating, um, we could observe individ small individual dots dun sa ibabaw ng tongue. And ma-observe po natin yung tongue by the uh, color. The coating will be thickest in the middle and at the rear. So, makapal po yung uh, sa middle kumpara po. Uh, makapal po yung sa middle and yung sa likod, yung sa rear position. This is because these areas of the tongue corresponds to the stomach and intestine, which are the organs that receive and transport the impure residue that is left behind after the transformation of the pure chi. So, um, yung pagkakaroon ng uh, thick coating sa middle and rear position, ito po ay dahil uh, doon po uh, nagko-concentrate uh, yung formation of pure chi na naiwan po. Kaya nakikita natin yung area na nagkakaroon ng thickness doon sa area ng stomach and intestine. This is reflected in these areas having a thicker and dirtier coating than the rest of the tongue. So yung po yung nangyayari. An alternative explanation for why the coating is naturally thicker on the rear of the tongue is that some of the impure residue from the transformation process rises from the stomach and ascends towards the mouth. So, um, yung transformation process uh, from the stomach umaakyat po towards the mouth, uh, kaya po na-observe natin yung uh, thicker tongue coating. This impure residue settles on the back of the tongue, so dun sa likod po ng dila, as it is this part of the tongue that is hit first. So dun po pag-akyat ng residue, yun po yung unang uh, natatamaan. This is likened to when the steam rises upward from a, a kettle and condenses at, on the bottom of a win, window pane. But the upper part of the glass is still transparent and dry. So like when we are boiling water dun sa kitel, yung residue nabubuo po dun sa my sides ng kitel. Uh, but still on the upper part, 
uh, meron siyang transparent and dry. The coating on the tongue does not usually extend to or cover the sides or the tip. So dito yung tongue coating normally hindi naman siya uh, nagko-coat or nagko-cover hanggang dun sa uh, kabuuan ng sides or nagko-cover hanggang dun sa tip. Here on the picture, we have examples ng mga coating without root. Kung observe po natin itong first picture, um, ito yung tang na parang may dumi lang po dito sa may side. Uh, the same din po dito sa may area which is uneven po yung pakalagay ng coating. Meaning, uh, hindi siya rooted. Uh, the same with the second picture, yung coating po dito uh, without root kaya para lang siyang nilagay uh, sa ibabaw. The same with the third picture sa area ng gallbladder area. Uh, like for example here sa may right side, para lang siyang binudbud na powder, black powder na pwedeng matanggal. Meaning hindi siya rooted. The tongue coating primarily reflects whether a condition is excess or deficient in nature. Whether the condition is hot or cold, may init o balamig, and the condition of the full organs. So, uh, pansinin niyo po, full organs ang sinabi for the tongue coating, meaning yung mga uh, stomach, uh, urinary bladder, yung mga full organs. The coating is not necessarily directly associated with the tongue color or yung tongue body color and shape and therefore can be viewed separately in certain situation. So ihiwalay po natin yung description ng tongue body or yung tongue body shape. The tongue coating can be used to rapidly differentiate the eight principles. So dito sa table, uh, the significance of interior and exterior, the observation is that the distribution of the coating on the tongue will reflect whether evil chi is in the interior or exterior. So, uh, sa tongue coating, uh, dito po natin malalaman kung uh, interior or exterior condition po yung uh, nag uh, pumapasok sa, sa katawan. Sa hot and cold, we Yung pag-heat naman, yung tongue coating is yellow and uh, dry po siya. While sa cold, uh, white po yung coating and wet naman. So tandaan po natin, pag-heat, uh, natutuyo po. While sa cold, may wet coating po siya. Si, sa excess and deficient condition naman, pag-excess, there is a thick coating. So once makapal po yung nakita natin coating, uh, the condition is excess while as a deficiency, like in deficiency, very thin po siya or peeled ang coating na may mga natatanggal. Sa chi deficiency, yung coating uh, lacks root naman. Sa yin and yang, yin deficiency, uh, very thin or peeled coating. While sa yin excess, there's a thick, white, and moist coating. So, tandaan po natin pag yin deficiency and uh, yin excess, ang, ang yin deficient is uh, may peeling yung coating while naman sa yin excess, moist naman sa coating. Sa yang deficiency, uh, there is white and wet coating. While sa yang excess, dito naman, dry coating yung dapat natin maano dito. Thick and yellow dry coating. Okay? Observation of the tongue coating is primarily relevant in acute condition. So, makakatulong daw po ito, uh, especially kung ang condition is very recent. This is because the coating is the aspect of the tongue that is quickest to change. So yung tongue coating po yun po yung mabilis uh, mag-change ng color 
or ng condition compared sa tang body. It can change by the hour, like in an acute uh, inpatient of evil chi, it is sometimes possible to observe changes in the coating in the front third of the tongue, especially the outer ed edge of this area. So, pag merong uh, acute condition, ma-observe po natin yung uh, changes sa coating or nagkakaroon ng coating sa front third ng tongue, especially dun sa may mga edges. So, sa harap ng tongue and sa edges. Uh, ito po yung hanapin or i-observe natin kung very recent po yung uh, condition ng patient. If the evil chip penetrates deeper into the body, kung pumasok, mas pumasok na po yung sakit, the coating will change by becoming thicker in the central areas of the tongue and possibly also changing color and consistency. So kung pumasok na po yung evil chip, uh, from the front third or from the front sides, um, yung coating po ay napupunta na sa may central areas of the tongue, meaning uh, mas nag-penetrate deeper na po yung evil chi. It is not only exogenous invasions that can produce rapid changes in the tongue coating. So hindi lang daw po external invasion ang pwedeng mag-produce ng rapid changes. Yung food stagnation will also manifest with changes in the tongue coating relatively quickly. So kung meron po yung patient ng food stagnation, uh, pwede rin po mag-manifest ng uh, rapid changes dun sa tongue. So isa po ito sa dapat natin itanong sa ating pasyente kung may na-observe po tayo na uh, tongue coating on the front third of the tongue. The general rule of the thumb is the thicker the coating, the stronger the evil chi. So, i-observe po natin kung mas makapal daw ang coating, meaning malakas po yung evil chi. If an organ is yin deficient, the tongue may manifest with lack of coating in the area of the tongue that corresponds to that organ. So, tandaan po natin pag yin deficiency, ang nangyayari is yung coating po is nawawala. And yung area na nawawala ng coating, uh, it corresponds kung ano po yung organ na affected. A healthy coating should have root, be evenly distributed, and be slightly mo moist. So kailangan po may root yung tang coating uh, for pag ito ay healthy. Having root means the coating should appear to be growing out of the tongue and not just lying on top of the tongue. So para siyang tumubo uh, from the tongue and hindi lang po siya yung parang nilagay lang sa ibabaw ng dila. If we go back to the metaphor of a wheat field, the wheat should appear to be growing up through the soil. So para, lang, para siyang tumubo uh, from the soil and not lying uprooted on the top of the earth like grown grass, moon grass. So hindi siya yung parang pinutol na mga damo na nilagay lang po dun sa wheat field. Ganon din po sa ating tongue. When a coating lacks root, it can be easily scraped off. So kung wala pong root, yung tongue coating, uh, madali po siyang matanggal. This is because the stomach, spleen, and kidney are not functioning as they should and a new healthy coating is not being formed to replenish the existing coating from below. So ito po yung tatlong organs, stomach, spleen, and kidney, yung nagpa-function uh, for the formation of a normal coating. The old coating eventually loses its connection to its root and starts to fall off. So once there is no root, yung coating um, natatanggal po siya. The rootless coating is always indicative of a deficiency condition. So once ma-observe po natin na rootless ang coating, uh, we could say that the condition is a deficiency. There may be a rootless coating in the early morning upon waking. 
So pagka gising natin, uh, pwede natin i-check or pag may na-observe tayo early in the morning pag uh, gising, uh, there could possibly a rootless coating. This is because the stomach and spleen are inactive at night. So hindi daw active yung stomach and spleen and have therefore not created a new coating on the tongue while the person sleep. So uh, pag kaumaga, try natin i-observe uh, kung may nakita tayo in the na may rootless coating. And this is because uh, hindi pa po active yung stomach and spleen to produce a new coating sa ating tongue. The coating also gives an impression of the development of a pathological condition. So, uh, dito natin ma-observe uh, kung meron na pong pathology na nagdi-develop. The coating suddenly disappearing in a disease is a negative sign even if the coating was excessively thick. So, once uh, we have a coating kahit ito po ay makapal na coating sa ating tang, once it suddenly disappear, bigla lang po siyang nawala, ito po ay pangit na sign. Intuitively, a thick coating disappearing might seem to be a positive development, but it is only positive if the change is gradual and not sudden. So, di ba, uh, pag sinabi natin na thick coating, it could mean that there is a strong evil chi, there is an excess condition, and pag nag-apply tayo ng treatment, um, ang normal uh, process na dapat mangyari to have a positive effect dun sa treatment natin, uh, we should observe that there is a gradual uh, thinning ng thick coating and hindi po dapat sudden because uh, ibig sabihin, if the change is sudden, it is probably due to yin or chi being damaged by the evil chi. So pwede pong nag-develop ng yin deficiency or yung chi uh, nasira or natalo po yung chi natin ng evil chi. A coating that suddenly becomes thick is usually seen when dampness blocks the middle jaw. So, pwede rin natin ma-observe yung pagtitiken, pagbiglang tiken ng tang coating uh, because meron, nagkaroon po ng dampness. When the exogenous uh, evil chi invades the body, the changes in the coating will usually only be seen in the front third of the tongue and the sides of this area. So, pag we have first uh, pagpasok po ng uh, external uh, evil chi, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, magkakaroon po ng changes first doon sa front third ng tang or the sides of this area. If the coating begins to thicken, thicken farther towards the center of the tang, and if the coating changes from color from white to yellow and starts to dry out, this indicates that evil chi has started to penetrate in tear and began to generate heat. So, ang um, observation po uh, from external evil chi nasa front third pa lang yung uh, changes sa coating and pag pumapasok na po yung evil chi, uh, pumupunta po siya sa center and pag nagkaroon po ng changes sa coloration from white to yellow, meaning uh, nagde-develop na po yung heat. So this process can often be quite rapid. So pwedeng uh, mabilis lang po ang uh, mangyari. In interior pathological condition, the distribution of the coating will indicate where the imbalance is in the body and which organ are most likely to be affected. So uh, coating po magbibigay sa atin kung alin uh, part ng body or anong organ po yung naapektuhan. The color and texture of the coating will give an indication of what type of imbalance is probable. So we have to observe the color and the texture of the coating. One should therefore observe whether the coating is thicker 
or thinner in certain areas of the tongue and whether there is a difference in the condition of the coating in these areas. So, pwede pong may thickness on one side or on the center or pwede pong manipis. Uh, Iko-compare po natin uh, left and right, center, front and back. Uh, next, we have the color of the coating. Sa coating, naturally, a pale and white color. So, yung po yung normal. It will also be white if there is a pathogenic cold present. Kung may cold naman, uh, uh, there could also be a white coloration on the coating. But the coating will be thicker and moist, moister. So, pag may presence ng cold, uh, thick white and moist. Pag meron naman ng heat, coating turns naman to yellow. The more heat there is, the darker the coating becomes. So the more heat ang present, mas bright po yung color yellow, coloration ng yellow. The coating will usually be drier unless there is damp heat or phlegm heat, in which case the coating can be sticky, greasy, or oily. So kung hindi naman po damp, uh, damp and phlegm ang present, uh, it should be uh, the coating is dry. However, kung meron pong damp heat or phlegm heat, ito na po yung ma-observe natin na ang tang coating is sticky and greasy or oily. In some situation, the coating is black or almost black. This may be a sign of extreme heat, uh, sobrang init, or damp cold ang present. So, kailangan natin malaman kung uh, heat ba siya or cold ba siya. Depending on how moist the coating is and what color the tongue body has. When there is extreme heat, the heat will have damaged fluid in the body. Therefore, the black coating will also be dry. So, always uh, para ma-distinguish natin, pag present po yung heat, yung tongue coating uh, would be dry. If the black coating is a manifestation of gunk, damp cold, the coating will instead be wet. So pag present naman yung cold, uh, ma-observe natin na basa po yung tang coating. Because cold can block the transportation and transformation of fluids which then accumulate on the surface of the tongue. So having a wet tang coating, uh, this is the presence of cold and Ito po ay dahil sa nablock po yung transportation and transformation ng fluid. There may be well differences in the color of the coating from one area to the tongue uh, to another. This can be a reflection of heat in certain area of the body or in an organ. Typically, the coating at the rear of the tongue is more yellow. So, yung likod po ng tongue, more yellow than at the front of the tongue. This is because damp heat tends to accumulate in the lower jaw. So, mas nag accumulate po yung damp heat sa lower jaw. Kaya, uh, more, ano po, mas brighter po yung yellow uh, sa rear, sa likod, kumpara po sa front. Heat in the stomach will turn the coating yellow in the center of the tongue or in a crack in the center of the tongue. So, pag may heat, ang coloration po ng stomach, uh, magkakaroon po ng yellowish coloration. If the coating on the sides of the tongue is yellow, so sa may side naman, it is important to observe how the color is on the rest of the tongue. So, i-compare po natin yung coloration ng other areas ng tongue when there is changes of yellow coloration dun sa side. If there is a yellow coating on the side and the rest of the tongue coating is white, so sa side yellow, tapos sa ibang part naman is white, this indicates that there is an invasion of wheat heat or heat in the intestine. So, di ba, sinabi natin na um, pag sa sides, uh, there could be an external like wind heat or there could be a presence of heat in the intestine. If the rest of the coating is also yellow, but the sides are even more yellowish, so yellow po yung tongue, but yung sides more 
yellowish. This usually indicates that there is heat in the liver and gallbladder. So because this is the area of the liver and gallbladder. Finally, if one side of the tongue has a yellow coating, so isang side po, yellowish ang coating, and the other side is white, sa kabilang side naman, white, this can be a sign that the exogenous evil chi is locked in Xiaoyang aspect or that there is heat in the liver and gallbladder. Okay. Next, we have moistness. This refers to both the general moistness of the tongue body and the moistness of the tongue coating. Both the tongue and coating should be slightly moist but not wet. So, pag inahanap natin yung normal uh, moistness, uh, slightly moist po siya, hindi siya yung wet. Sa so, pathogenic heat, uh, will dry and damage fluid and blood. Yin deficiency is characterized by lack of fluids and therefore, the tongue will also be dry. Sa so, yang deficiency po yun. Uh, yin deficiency, I mean. Fluids and blood are closely linked to each other and blood helps to moisten the body. A dry tongue can therefore also be seen when there is blood deficiency. So, Pag blood deficient, uh, observe po natin na dry po yung tongue. So yang deficiency in cold can mean that body fluids are not transformed and transported optimally and this will therefore accumulate in the tongue causing the tongue coating to become wet. So ito, na pan, ito naman po yung pag nag-observe tayo ng wet tongue coating, uh, this signifies or indicates that there is yang deficiency or there is a presence of cold. Next, we have the greasy and sticky coating. Sa greasy coating arise when chi does not transform fluids. So pag hindi transform ang fluid, uh, nagkakaroon ng dampness or plan to arise. Greasy and sticky coating are very similar in appearance and cause. Sabi ni Masyosha, the papili on the tongue in a greasy coating as looking like the bristles on the toothbrush that are covered in butter. So para siyang uh, na-observe mo pa yung bristles na sa ibabaw merong butter sa ibabaw. You can still see each individual bristle but they are thicker and have a greasy coating. May greasy coating po sa ibabaw. Kumpara naman po sa sticky coating, the individual papillae are no longer distinguishable from each other and the coating will look more oily. So ang difference po ng sticky coating, mas makapal na po siya and more oily. A greasy or sticky coating always indicate presence of dampness or phlegm. Next, we have the moldy coating. It is also called a tupo coating in Chinese, but it seems as if there are small pieces of tupo on the tongue. So, pero parang may meron po siyang tupo. In English, this would translate as a cottage cheese coating. Parang may uh, cottage cheese because it will look as if the person has just eaten a cottage cheese. The moldy coating is seen when there is a stomach fire or toxic fire in the throat. So, pag naka-observe po tayo ng moldy coating, parang siyang may small pieces of tufo or may cottage cheese coating sa ibabaw, meaning there is a stomach fire or toxic heat fire in the throat. Next, we have the uh, tongue coating yung table. So, if we have the observation of having a thin, white, Rooted, normal moistness, this signifies that the tongue coating is normal. Pag merong rootless coating, uh, this would indicate stomach chi deficiency or yin deficiency. Pag meron namang white, thin, and slippery, so uh, tandaan po natin, dito po is thin, uh, it could indicate that there is presence of damp cold disrupting the uh, protective chi. Pag nagkaroon ng white, 
thick and slippery. Dito po is thick. Kumpara po dito sa isa, which is thin. Pag kumapal na po, there is, meaning pumasok na, there is internal damp cold or food stagnation of short duration. So ito po yung kaibahan ng having a white thin slippery and a thick white thick slippery. Pag thin, meaning nasa external, pag thick, pumasok po internal na. Sa thick white naman, next, we have food stagnation or excess cold. While sa dry white, <clears throat> cold that is in the process of transforming into heat or fluids are being endured. <clears throat> Excuse. Pag greasy white, we have internal dampness or external cold or dampness or spleen yang deficiency. Pag dry yellow, internal heat is starting to damage sheen. Pag thin yellow, uh, wind heat, big sabihin, nasa labas pa po. Pag thick yellow, food stagnation turning into heat or there is a presence of excess heat. Pag greasy yellow, there is internal damp heat or plan heat. Pag yellow stripes on the sides of the tongue and the rest, of the coating is white. There is exterior pathogen invading inward. Galing sa labas, papasok. And heat in the stomach and intestine. Pag dark yellow stripes on the sides of the tongue and the rest of the coating is yellow, meaning there is heat in the liver and gallbladder. So, uh, the whole tongue is yellow or the rest of the coating is yellow with a dark yellow stripes sa sides, yung po yung heat in the liver and gallbladder. Pag yellow on one side and white on the other, heat in the liver and gallbladder pa rin, or merong Xiaoyang syndrome. Pag damp, gray, black, or brown, there could be a presence of damp cold. Pag dry, gray, black, brown, there could be a presence of heat. Pag moldy naman, stomach fire or there is a toxic fire. Pag no coating, uh, there is a yin deficiency. Pag dry tongue, there is a presence of heat. Diba kanina sabi ko yung heat, uh, usually we could observe that there is presence of dryness. Uh, meron din uh, blood deficiency or yin deficiency. Pag wet naman yung tongue, uh, yang deficiency or there is a presence of cold. So, ganda lang po. Thank you for listening.